every year I interview about four or 500 energy experts, about half of them outside Canada and the other half inside Canada. But lately what we've seen is attacks, very public attacks, particularly on social media, on expertise. So I'm going to talk to Professor Dwayne Brett, who is a professor of political science at Mount Royal University, and himself has been the target of some of these attacks. So welcome to the interview, Dwayne. Hey, good afternoon, Markham. Now, I have to say, I, I've got a, a dog in this fight, because if uh, we if we don't value expertise, that would be a big blow to my journalism. But I think it goes beyond that. I mean, we live in an increasingly complex, sophisticated world, and we need experts like you to provide the insight so that we can understand the issues of the day. And would you agree or disagree? Oh, absolutely. And, and expertise in a, is in all sorts of areas, uh, right? It's not just you know political expertise or economic expertise. It's carpentry ex expertise. It's plumbing expertise. Uh, it's, uh, you know, working on an oil rig expertise, like all of us have different degrees of, of the expertise. But what we've been seeing um, is that um, it doesn't matter um, that I if I spend, you know, an hour in an evening Googling something, that's the equivalent of spending 20 years studying it. Um, and I think that is a major problem. Um, Tom Nichols probably wrote the best book on this, the American political scientist called The Death of Expertise, and he published that before COVID. And I would argue COVID has actually made things worse. And that decline of expertise, which had been beginning, has, you know, accelerated since then. What is the political agenda? And I'm assuming there is one, but what's the political agenda behind this? I think it's to... Um, go after critics uh, to be able to say, no, you're you're not an expert, your opinion is wrong, or your opinion is just as valuable or useless as anyone else, that expertise doesn't exist. And I think that is a, a major problem uh, because it avoids some, you know, important criticism. So I think we need to look at it from a range of actors. You know, the, the Twitter trolls, that's one thing right, to, to go on about expertise and to say, you know, I Google this story so that you're wrong. And then having to spend time explaining that the story is incomplete and the story is wrong and that you don't understand the larger context of that, um, that's one thing. But it's when you have very prominent political figures um, attacking expertise, that's when we have a, a problem. So I, I put them on a scale of government to government adjacent people, to you know, just the, the nameless trolls. And what matters is what government says, because once they say something like that, once they go after the credentials of, uh, of a critic, then the mob follows through. And expertise is not based on the content, it's based on do I agree or don't I agree? Um, and uh, we, we see some really remarkable situations where experts are criticized and criticized and then all of a sudden agreed to. Um, and it's not because their expertise diminished or improved. It's because now the expertise corresponds with my pre-existing views. Uh, we see an example of that in Alberta politics. Uh, I think it was just today or yesterday. Uh, the uh, Premier Danielle Smith has vociferously attacked the International Energy Agency. In fact, you know, she's called it a radical political organization, uh, which which, if you know, the, you know, it's a bunch it's a bunch of, of energy nerds and economists in Paris cranking out these very technical reports on various aspects of the energy. So her attack is very clearly, I think, part of this narrative that is supported by the OPEC modeling that came out uh, last month, where it's she's arguing for a long transition where oil and gas will be used for decades and decades and decades. Don't worry about it. We know we're not under threat. Whereas the IEA says, no, 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 peak oil, peak fossil fuels demand by 2030. And the implication is Alberta is under threat. It's there's an existential threat to to the economy. And this seems to me to be a pretty good example of where a government, uh, you know, a political leader is is attacking expertise for their own ends. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, she was shooting the messenger. Uh, she didn't like the message that the International Energy Agency came out. So essentially called it fake news and a radical leftist organization. And then yesterday, Brian Jean, the energy minister, tweets out a graphic that had been put forward by Canada Proud, you know, one of the pro oil and gas groups, using IEA data on long-term um, LNG. So how can this radical leftist group all of a sudden be cited by the energy minister? And it's because they liked that message. They just didn't like the transition message. And, you know, Donald Trump gets blamed for a lot of this, um, but he, he was not alone. I mean, he went after the press um, and he, he said it was fake news and further on said, the only people you can believe is me. Right. Don't believe them. Well, then that expertise has uh, that that critique of expertise has broadened to basically anyone who disagrees with you. And as I said, this was going on pre COVID. But when COVID hit, all of a sudden people that used to have credibility, like doctors and nurses and public health officials, no longer had credibility because they didn't like the message. And therefore, they're all wrong. And we saw the uh, the internet has been a great boon, but it's also been a great bust. That this idea that you can simply spend an evening Googling something and you've got the world at your fingertips, sure you can. But do you have the background context knowledge and expertise to be able to distinguish between good stories and bad stories? Are you able to assess methodology and what is a good methodology and what is a bad methodology? Do you have the context to be able to assess the track record of that organization? Do you have the experience to understand the motivations behind that? No, you don't. So you just think that, well, because I have been able to do this, that I have become an expert on COVID then I become an expert on energy transition. Then I become an expert on Middle Eastern politics, you know, all within the span of a, of a week. Now, one of the most extraordinary attacks on expertise that's taken place in Alberta recently, it comes courtesy of David Parker, who yeah. is, uh, you and I, I did an interview with you about him uh, and his Take Back Alberta organization. They recently at the United Conservative Party AGM uh, took over uh, basically 100% control of the board, uh, the board of that organization. And he has been on Twitter basically saying, we don't recognize your, your education. We don't recognize your expertise. You're nothing. Uh, and, and I don't think I've ever seen it stated that baldly. What's going on there? Well, and he goes further than that, right? So he, you know, he'll attack political scientists for, for not having skin in the game and for not having done the, the work that he did. Fair enough. We, we get that all the, all the time. But then he attacks other political staffers uh, because they know nothing about politics. And he attacks elected politicians because they know nothing about politics, that the only person who knows anything about politics or about health or about gender identity is coincidentally David Parker. So his view, uh, and he's had some success, he's had a lot of recent wins, but his belief is that he is now an expert on everything, uh, and all contrary expertise is, is wrong, is, is incorrect. And he's also relying, um, and, and I think you've, you've delved into this with some of your reporting, with people who, who work in a sector or work in an industry in a very narrow spot and then believe that they have an understanding of the entire sector. And I think that's what he's saying is, I went to school, therefore I know what is going on in elementary schools today. Uh, or I went to university once, so I now understand what goes on in every classroom. Or I've gone to the emergency ward, so you know I have a degree of expertise in the healthcare system. All of those statements have an element a slim element of truth to them. You've all experienced something. Um, you know, I played hockey growing up. I could not coach the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> like, let's let's be clear. There are degrees of expertise. I know how to skate, you know, but I'm not a Connor McDavid, right? And and so I think that's part of it. Uh, and and you see this 
in so many different fields where people make observations based on a sliver of knowledge and then extrapolate that. Now, there's another uh, attack on expertise that comes from experts. And we see that, it's, I think they call it the expert fallacy, where you have expertise in one area, therefore you think you have expertise in many areas. In my yeah. field, in in, uh, in in energy reporting, I have to say engineers are the ones I get it mostly from, you know, and and very often, uh, but you also saw it, that was a big issue in COVID-19. We saw people who didn't have expertise in masks or in vaccines or in public health, but they were doctors or maybe they were yep. professors. And they're a, yeah. How, how big a problem has that become? It, it is. And I wrote just a little bit on this. I, I wrote a piece for The Line, uh, a rebuttal to a, a Jen Gerson column where she lambasted academics uh, over uh, the Hamas attacks in Israel. And I said, you need to separate actual knowledge versus just being a, a professor. So if you're an English literature professor, you know, what is your knowledge of Palestinian, Gaza, Hamas, Israeli relation? You have to rely on on expertise or they were conflating student groups with actual um, you know, faculty members or administration. Um, you, you see that in, under COVID clearly where you might be an emergency room doctor now talking about public health. Uh, and that gives you um, uh, a level of credibility. We see that over climate change, you know, where they'll find the climate change denier who actually is an earth scientist. And you see that with business people all the time. I've made a lot of money. Therefore, I understand politics and I understand social relations. And so just because you're an expert in one area does not make you an expert in all areas. Um, uh, but that's often comes about. Um, and we don't distinguish, you know, but between that. Wait, last question. Um, what might the consequences be for our administration, how we run governments, how we conduct politics, if this trend uh, were to accelerate uh, any further? Well, what you'd be seeing is the politicization uh, of expertise, uh, not dispassionate knowledge and studies, but only accepting those that go with your core beliefs or go with your worldviews. Um, you know, that you're you're siphoning yourself off from a larger piece of, of knowledge and only looking at those that, that already agree with you. And we've seen some of that all already. Um, you know, I, I focus a fair bit on, on Danielle Smith, and part of that was her radio background. She would seek out contrarian views. So if there were, uh, you know, 100 economists saying one thing and two saying something else, she would find the two. If there were 100 climate scientists saying one thing and three saying something else, she'd try to find the, the three. If there were public health officials, she would find the minority. And that makes for really good radio, right? Because you're bringing contrarian arguments, you're bringing in something that goes against the grain. That's not how you want to govern a province, is by relying on the outside the mainstream uh, expertise, I think is, is very problematic. Well, quick follow up. Um, it seems to me that this attack on expertise and using it for political purposes is is part of today's radical populism, as you've called it. Oh, in absolutely. Past. I mean, the origins of populism uh, and populism today is an us versus them. It's about the pure people versus the elites. Now, typically, uh, old left wing populism, the elites were bankers, right? The the elites were big business people. Um, more right-wing populism today are uh, elites and experts. So uh, you you would have you know academics or doctors or opinion columnists or or people of that ilk uh, that you're then attacking as as the elite, where the mass population understands itself better. I mean, look at Donald Trump. Um, you know, who is acting in that populist vein. And you would think that a business person of his ilk, you know, whether he has $8 billion or whether he has $1 billion, you know, he'll fight vociferously on, but he's got a lot more money than you and I do. He's got a private jet and he's got golf clubs and all of that. But he puts himself as part of the pure people against the elites, but he's not talking about business people. He loves business people. 
He loves authoritarian dictators. What he is talking about is any critic of his is by definition an elite and not to be trusted. Well, Dwayne, as always, really appreciate your insights. Thank you very much for this. Okay, you're welcome, Markham.